The quick poem I have to start us off is by poet Barbara Crooker. It's called Sometimes I Am Startled. Like this morning when the wild geese came squawking, flapping their rusty hinges and something about their trek across the sky made me think about my life. The places of brokenness, the places of sorrow, the places where grief has strung me out to dry. And then the geese come calling, the leader falling back when tired, another taking her place. Hope is born on wings. Look at the trees. They turn to gold for a brief while, then lose it all each November. Through the cold months they stand, take the worst weather has to offer. And still they put out shy green leaves come April, come May. The geese glide over the cornfields, land on the pond with its sedges and reeds. You do not have to be wise. Even a goose knows how to find shelter, where the corn still lies in the stubble and dried stalks. All we do is pass through here the best we can. They stitch up the sky, and it is whole again. Halloween was canceled today. Can they do that? Mom said, it's not canceled, just postponed. I don't see the difference. Halloween is Halloween, right? They never postpone Monday. <laughs> I remember a while back we changed the clocks. That really scared me. Isn't it really 5 o'clock at 5 o'clock? Can we just make up what time it is? I'm going to remember that when it's time to get up to catch the bus. I tried to take a phone message the other day. After tell your dad, I pretty much lost my way. <laughs> Something about apartments, I think. Do they really believe I can understand this stuff? Dad says it's a safety issue, but I don't know. My friend Brett fell through the jungle gym last week. Miss Porter said he looked like a doll stuck in a blender. He cried a little, but then he was fine. Kids are tougher than they look. And what do the ghosts think? Sorry, bad weather, go back to your grave. I just came from a grave, how bad can the weather be? I have clean hair and a clean face. I brush my teeth, usually. My grandmother thought it was adorable when I said, excuse me, Graham, may I have another cookie? I let my little brother be Batman this year, even though I called it months ago. <laughs> we should just have Halloween on Halloween. Mom wondered what everyone's gonna do with all that candy, me too. <laughs> but it's okay to have candy anytime, right? Right? Thank you. Mr. Adams, an unexpected call, three visits to a crypt, leave me pondering whys and wherefores. Your revolution amazes, putting heart and soul, life in jeopardy to form a nation. But was it absurdity? All those checks and balances when your worst fears have come true. You gave us role models, Integrity, morality, honesty, evidence abounds. Ordinary rose to extraordinary. Won a war against a world power, built a government. But today's dilemmas you sought to prevent. Puzzled by the call, I blurted out, so what do you have to tell us, Mr. Adams? And I heard you whisper in my ear, you are the new patriots standing up after silent years, holding many different views, growing faith, finding courage, learning, changing your destiny. Golden leaves released by the stately maple beyond the shed fall like confetti in a noisy flurry, spinning and dancing to their finality. Wrens and squirrels sit up in the tree's sturdy branches, cracking open the seeds and nuts of falling autumn. Together, feather and tail and leaf make such a racket, cause such a chattering, that it is impossible not to notice, not to seek them out, to marvel and to scold. And this I wrote for my husband sitting over there, not singing today, called Orange November. 
In the first murky light of day, trees bared, their cover blown across the fields of every yard, air tinged with the hint of future snows, we breathed the sweetness of summer past and autumn passing. As fruits fall from their vines, we settle down among the browning grass, among the ever pines. Thankful now for harvest bounty, glad beyond reckoning for heat and happy children, dogs under the table, friends at the door, we pause to consider these few peaceful days before the death of the year. And in those pensive moments before the great red and green cacophony, we bow to the grace of orange November. Thank you. That unexpected moment when the sky's expanse is open gray, the sun still struggling to extricate himself from last night's lover's oaths in Eastern Asia. Here, we sit and stare at sidewalks, sipping coffee. Concrete is a mirror for the moment of the earth's cold canopy. Heaven's courts are shuttered and shall not reopen until 9 a.m. And so, we stand in line, our overcoats and papers, hands thrust into pockets and our eyes not meeting, though we do when no one's watching glance in windows, mostly looking for ourselves. Someone coughs and lights another cigarette. A suit and tie reads through his legal briefs, but others of us merely close our eyes. We move our lips without a sound. Our breath ascending incense, rising over rooftops of the world into the chilly dawn. Another one called Strike Force Alpha. <coughs> Maintenance Strike Force Alpha. One guy standing on a desk, moving ceiling tiles and staring at the very face of chaos. Crazy lightning madness mind face, wires, lights, who knows what sorts of rodent dung. There hides Leviathan, the ever-present primal serpent AC duct. The hero with 10,000 name tags, I'll say Bob. And with him stand three others doing nothing. Thank you. Bereft at the coffee stations of life, yet every tree and leaf waves at me going by. The chippy chills of autumn light send clouds of doubt racing low through my sight. Shiver and chill, though the trees glow with warmth, I shudder and know its illusion that glows while the storms gather strength out of sight. Stopped for a moment to stare at a refuge tucked away there, warmth and shelter inside where we humans hide with our coffee from all of our care. Stop a moment and stay. Celebrate the start of a day. Huddle in and shore up, but remember to look and take in a change in the weather with care. Winds of time blowing there chase us fast away, high running before the chill of the day. Buckle in and get tough for the season ahead, but stop for your coffee before you move on. Toast the seasons of life as they're come and are gone. Drink in their color and tones, Feast on their warmth, skate on their chill, each an experience of life to fulfill. But remember to muse on each passing phase with a stop at a shop and a good place to gaze out at the world while you recount your days. Take a trip each day to the coffee shop of your life. Fill a cup, chat with friends, and just take a moment of time for whatever you need, a breath for a life, for a start of a day. Thank you for listening to my book. Funny how 
the sun is shining everywhere I go. All the clouds have silver linings, and I think I finally know where the pot of gold lies hidden at the rainbow's end. Where we bring our dreams unbidden and broken wings can mend. Dandelion flashing like a little golden sun bursts into a globe of stars, a wish on everyone. Pick it and I set myself a seat upon the wind. In my heart I trust the world and let my life begin. Beads of glass, a dress of tie-dye, moccasins with fringe. I'll give you my best smile if you stop and let me in and drive me to the rainbow gathering. Open-ended, spirit-guided, traveling. I can see the doors. So many magic doors are opening, and I can feel there's more. So much more in store for me. I'm gonna run to the one that's most open wide and fly my way outside. Gonna find my true friends, simple people free of care. Find the true name of my soul, and love none can compare. Drink a thousand wine-drenched kisses, candlelit with star-filled wishes. Sing and dance a night or two away. Funny how the sun is shining everywhere I go. All the clouds have silver linings, and I think I finally know where the pot of gold lies hidden at the rainbow's end, where we bring our dreams unbidden and broken wings can I'm going to read you two pieces. First one is called Foiled. Matter of fact, I was under her knife, a small leaf of upper palate en route to my gum, when I realized she was telling her assistant an interesting story. I was thinking about raking the leaves and missed the beginning the part where she planned to go to the, the, to the charity ball and meet up with friends, so she found an, a date to escort her. He seemed so suitable, picked her up, checked her coat. Stitch in time, I came to when the story, I came to when the story unfolded, I came to when the story unfolded, the rake sneaked off and left her there. She had lost time from her friends as she faded, as she leafed through the ballroom for him, needle in a haystack. Finally, she texted and learned from his reply, ever polite, he had blown her off. She, without a car, in her heels, no money for a cab, in her skimpy dress, the leaves of fabric blown by cold, damp harbor winds. I heard South Boston, downtown crossing, garden. Homeless blow through the streets like leaves swirling around her. The thread she pulled through my gum emerged bloody. She threaded it through again. 
I thought, date from hell. She thought maybe he didn't like her friends. And this is called The New Building. Traffic, first part. The building, a diving board atop a mountain, overlooks the sea of traffic pooling at its feet. Tail lights, armies of workers make their ways home. You cry sleep from your eyes every morning, not to take part in the slump of cars. Agitation deepens, living in darkness without power. The parking lots come out of its ears. The smaller ones crush you like blown glass under tire. Two, interior. The rooms are not rooms, workstations, shrubs, fire bush in greens and orange, sift through the flames to find your seat. Kitchen equals refrigerator and sink, one floor. Microwave, cafeteria, another. Is there no place a worker can store food, heat, and eat it? Pay dearly to wish to wash your dishes in the same spot. Three, at, at desk. Handbook is a link, not a book. To read or not or to forget. Read and click to acknowledge having read the rules you are sure to break. The IT guy sees your boyfriend's photo full up on your screen. The blue lake, the sparkles of sunlight, shivers of waves, the length of him, the length of a god. What towel shields, no one smells. A halo shimmers from his head. A pyramid of light explodes. He closes his eyes, pretends your foot is in his mouth. The waters seep in when you break the rules. You wander the halls like a child. Don't learn not to complain. Children are meant to be seen. This is called A Marriage. When the shape of the dream changed, was that the betrayal? When you turned away, was it for a solitary life? When questions were asked, silence answered. A memory of when your body moved in me. You stood in the doorway, already gone, tired phantom of something that had been before, long past forgiveness. No evidence scar when the heart is broken. Loss does not go away, it goes deeper. Years of winter lie ahead. I read until the light is gone. Room so cold, the empty bed. A clean kill. Oregon, late October, my 11th birthday. Father returns, all red plaid, ear flaps bouncing, white-tailed doe, rope to roof, of 62 turquoise impala. Back seat, his lucky Remington, Budweiser cans. Like a cat offering mouse to master, he wanted praise from wife, daughter. We always disappointed him, always made him angry. He drove dough to get butchered, packed venison into the old Frigidaire freezer. He ate meat and potatoes every night at five, all through that damp, rainy winter. By spring, wife was dead, daughter gone. I never ate the dough, nor any animal since. Father talked of mounting her head, but I don't think he ever did. on the passing of W.T. Grants. W.T. and me, we go back in time. Before plazas and malls, kiosks and food courts, a W.T. to the tune of a live piano, playing popular hits and a Saturday clock that ticked in halftime, where hot fudge Sundays 
were 15 cents, 20 with nuts. And where sales ladies in pastel hairnets allowed us an afternoon to choose a ball of yarn, ribbons, or a new diary. In a corner up front, a photo booth supplemented our young lives with smiles pasted forever in family albums. I remember store managers leaning on a counter, talking to pretty sales girls, an occasional glance over their shoulder. W.T. Grants on a Saturday was a first step away from home and school, safe as a library, safer even, surrounded by a multitude of things, all comprehensible, future consumers not yet consumed with wanting. Sweet days of youth and grants, seeing, touching, feeling, and taking the next bus home. With time, WT, like all of us, changed and dispersed, became all business, less personal. I returned many times to the new grants, looking for the familiar, never Bearing gifts we traverse afar Feeling found and more and found And following yonder star
Peach and pear, apricot, then this.